I sure could use some help. Yeah, hey man, I think this guy needs some help. Yeah, I'll give you a hand. Hey, what's up, Internet? I'm making this video to try to help you save money with your printer. There's these systems called Continuous Ink Supply Systems or Continuous Ink Systems. You can find these systems online for many printers, maybe even yours. So let's go over some pros and cons. First pro, ink cartridges are no more. Second pro, the refill for these systems is relatively cheap. And the third pro is uh, the initial cost is pretty cheap, around 30 bucks. And a final pro, it can let you print cheap like for cheap. The cons, uh, first con is the setup is difficult. It can be messy. Uh, many people buy these systems and are unhappy due to difficult installation. However, uh, this video should help you out with that specifically. Yeah, another con is ink quality. Uh, while it may meet the quality of generic ink, uh, it's not guaranteed uh, quality like the name brands out there. Uh, having said that, uh, it has worked just fine for me uh, in the past, yeah. So, a quick background. Uh, on that is uh, my history with these systems. Uh, for my first one, it was for HP OfficeJet J4580 on one. I actually have footage from that uh, still, so that's what you're watching now. And I actually did this system as a conversion from an Epson kit. Uh, it was very messy, and the fail point back then was of the print heads. Since the print heads are built into the HP print cartridges, they're not meant uh, to last long. They're just single use. So uh, the ink heads started malfunctioning way before the ink even ran out. Uh, I do not recommend uh, continuous ink supply systems on printers uh, that, that have the heads built into the replacement ink cartridges like these HP ones here. The next print I used one of these systems with was an Epson Stylus Photo R200. The system worked well with that. So well, I ended up filling the black ink reservoir twice and the color reservoirs uh, on, on top of what the system came with at once. Uh, the final dates of that print is when I got an error saying that the heads were shot. And I was actually excited when I saw it because I thought it couldn't be done. You know, it's, uh, I printed a ton of 4x6 photos. Uh, with that printer uh, on a continuous ink supply system and yeah i would sometimes set it overnight to print pictures in high quality just hours of operation so uh, now i have another epson and this one is the epson stylus photo r200 the only difference i can see between the 210 and the 200 is that the 200 doesn't have the micro weave feature but it still prints awesome photos so in short i have an experience with these they can work uh, let's take a look uh, at this kit really quick. This particular kit comes from eBay, uh, as you can see here. It comes with the ink reservoirs already full, tubing, cartridges with auto set or auto reset chips attached, uh, tubing stabilizers uh, or arms that you can say uh, with the double-sided tape already set, uh, air filters for the reservoirs, and a syringe for priming, which uh, I will show you how to do uh, by my own method shortly. My kit also came with this metal portion that can be attached to the syringe which is useful for priming as well. Uh, before you see the how-to though, uh, please keep in mind that it's still a great idea to read the directions that come with your kit. Yeah. Uh, as an added tip, if you have any latex gloves, they are very handy. Pun alert. Use them. Uh, I did not have them uh, during the filming of this video, so uh, I do not wear them in this video. Yeah. Uh, so let's install this beast. Let's do that. Uh, first, take your already working printer and remove the cartridges. After that, uh, unplug the printer from its power source. Uh, then line up your uh, continuous ink supply kit or system uh, next to the printer and uh, make sure that it, uh, the tubing isn't twisted up. Yeah. Uh, then hold the tubing with one hand and set the new cartridges in with the other. Make sure that they're secure and you know, pop them in. Well, for this printer, you're also directed to remove the, the cartridge snap arm. So here I am doing that. Yeah. Then you mount one of the tube stabilizer arms like so, making sure that when the cartridges move into or move to the other side of the printer, uh, the tubing isn't bent, uh, kinked, or stretched. Uh, the final stabilizer that goes on the end of the printer uh, is, is right here, Yeah, so you can see that. Uh, once all of that is done, uh, you'll want to install the air filters. Uh, they are placed onto the, uh, or into the small hole on top of the reservoirs, and this can be messy. Uh, the rear portion of my reservoirs were full of ink, so I had to 
tip them so that the ink transferred to the storage area of the reservoirs uh, before I uh, popped uh, the small plugs. It was kind of scary. Um, also note that the air filters have one end that is larger than the other. The larger end goes into the reservoir uh, so they, they fit like baby bear's porridge. Just right. After that, you will move to, uh, to the cartridges and unplug the plug on the cartridge, as seen here. Uh, I'm using the metal portion that came with the syringe to do this. Uh, then what I do is, to prime the system is I take the syringe and pump air through the air filters on the reservoirs to get the ink flowing through the tubes and into the ink cartridge uh, in the printer. Uh, there is another method that people use where they use the syringe on the plug hole of the cartridge uh, in the printer to pull the ink. Uh, if it's done that way, there's a risk of getting ink into, uh, in the syringe, and then you'll have to clean it out before you use it on the next cartridge. Yeah. Please keep in mind uh, that my method may actually cause the print head to deposit some ink inside the printer. When I did it, it was minimal, so I didn't mind. If you forget to unplug the cartridge, though, like take the plug out of the cartridge, uh, it will be a different story. Big mess. Moving on, uh, once you get this started, you'll notice ink filling the tubes. Uh, try to get all the air bubbles out of the tubes. Yeah. Well, once that's done, put the plug back in the cartridge. It may actually get a little messy, as you can see here. Uh, maybe have some paper towels or some toilet paper around. But keep in mind that the fibers from uh, paper towels, toilet paper can uh, clog the head, so uh, don't let the fiber get into the ink. Just clean the ink off the outside of the cartridges where it's built. Uh, yeah. Be sure to prime every ink. Uh, once you're done, you may notice that the ink in the tubes has headed uh, to the reservoirs and that there is a little air in the tubes where they go into the cartridge. That's okay. Uh, once you start printing, they usually uh, they're usually good, as you can see here, before I uh, start test printing, and here is me test printing after. Yeah. Uh, one thing I did notice while I was doing this was that it looked like my yellow ink had chunks of stuff in it. That's not good. I'm hoping that there's like another mid-cartridge filter that catches the stuff like that. Anyway, uh, when you've completed the priming process, you are ready to plug the printer in and uh, get some test prints started. You may need to modify your printer's case uh, so that it can close, but this printer didn't need any modifications. It stays slightly open. I chose to print uh, my own test print design for my first print, and then I printed a CMYK sheet uh, to flush the ink uh, through the heads, yep. And then I aligned the heads and it took about a half hour for that, and then the whole process took about two hours. Another suggestion is to get a board and put the printer and the ink supply system on the board. Yeah, this kit, this kit is well worth it. And for some closing remarks, I want to urge you to do as much research as possible about your specific printer if you're looking at getting one of these kits. Seek out any success stories uh, that will help with one of these continuous ink supply systems. Uh, I have printed several pages of color photos with this very kit since I've installed it and have not had any clogged heads or discoloring. Uh, this system would be great if you plan on making flyers or like uh, bind like bind booklets, or you just want to print photos to send to family uh, via classic mail. Uh, as an added tip, if you're just wanting to print small full color flyers, I suggest making an image file and going to a dot com retailer like Snapfish or Amazon, or I think even Walmart uh, does it, where you can get four by six full color prints for nine cents a piece. And the shipping is usually reasonable cost, and if it's a nearby store, you can just pick them up uh, from the store after you're ordering them online. You just boom. Uh, that's a sweet deal if you want to, uh, say, get your band flyers out or make a giant business card or perhaps, ooh, postcards. Anywho, uh, please feel free to leave comments below and, and or uh, let me know if you have any video suggestions or requests uh, for any other videos. Uh, if you like this video, there's a button for that. Uh, if you want to see more videos like it, there's a button for that. And if uh, you're just bored, check out some of my other videos or head on over to trytohelpyou.com and maybe be equally as bored. Yeah. I hope that helped. I sure could use some help. Hey, man, I think this guy needs some help. Yeah, I'll give you a hand.